Welcome to Shockaholic. My name is Chandler Bullock and I'm here to host you. This is where we're going to talk about the shocking sides of cinema. Today, I actually want to do something a little more casual, actually a little more chilled out. Uh, as you may be able to tell with the way I look right now, I actually just got off of work and uh, it's been a bit of a long day. And I want to be able to give you guys as much content as I possibly can, but I have a bit of a work schedule that's pretty crazy. I don't know if any of you know, but if you do follow me on Twitter, you're probably aware of the fact that I'm a manager for an escape room and we do things based on bookings. So it's just crazy. It's always busy. Um, to make sure that I can give you as much content as possible, I need to do these sort of shorter videos that I can do in my spare time. So I will continue A Century of Horror, but that's the bigger projects. I want those to be a little bit longer, better researched, fully edited. But then every now and then you're going to get something like this. There's still going to be reviews, there's still going to be other things that are really cool, but for today and for these little videos, I thought that I'd do a particular segment that I'm going to call A Shot of Horror to make sure that it sounds nice and short and sweet like a shot. So I have here a bottle of Jack Daniels, uh, have it lying around for quite a long time actually and I've got my Jason shot glass so what we're gonna do at the end of this video we're gonna pour it in we're gonna tip it back each video is also going to be dedicated to some sort of aspect of horror and this is gonna have a lot less planning involved so maybe a few edits here and there just to make sure I don't tr trip over my words too much or something like that for the most part I'm gonna keep everything in that I can I want to do this kind of free flowy so for those of you who don't know me, I know a couple of you do, but for those who really don't know me at all, I actually have a background in improv. I've done that for over 10 years now, and it's been a while since I've gotten to do anything with improv, so I think it'd be really cool to do something here. Not necessarily character work, but just something completely improvised off the top of my head. And that's what this is going to be about. So we'll take different topics and things that I know about horror or like about horror or just anything. Maybe you can even give me some ideas for topics in the comments and I will ramble on about it for hopefully just five to ten minutes. This one might be a little longer since I'm introducing the whole concept of it, but yeah. So for today's shot of horror, I wanted to talk about horror as a safe space, because for me it always has been a really safe space. It's actually why I'm so enamored with it, why I gravitate towards it, because I always have, and I think I always will. I mean, I'm 33 years old, and since I can remember, I've been interested in horror, I've been involved in horror, I've always done something spooky or whatever. But let's talk a little bit about what a safe space entails then, because for a lot of people, I know that horror can be a safe space, and a lot of us will go to it to get a bit of a comfort blanket. But I do think there's a difference between the two, a comfort blanket and a safe space. You know, safe space entails that it's a place that everybody can come into, and that you can be safe and away from harm. And the harsh truth and reality of it is, horror isn't necessarily a safe space. I mean, it, it is and it isn't. So a lot of you are aware of the fact of a lot of the allegations that have been going around, not just within the horror community, but through every different community and industry, which is likely to happen with the way that our world is built and all the systems that are in play. A lot of bad people have had a lot of power and they've been able to exert that power for a long time. And people are finally fed up with it. So what you're discovering is that the place that was safe for you was never a safe space. And for a lot of other people, they've actually discovered this way longer. They just haven't said anything out of possibly fear or not understanding what to do or maybe not even understanding what has happened. And that's a shame and I know that for a lot of people that's very hurtful and it makes us feel like not a safe industry or community anymore but that's the danger you have with danger that's the risk that you have with any space so I want to talk about horror as a safe space how is it a safe space why is it a safe space and I still think that for those of us who need it to be it is a safe space and we will maintain it as a safe space I've always looked at it as the place that the misfits go to. Um, you know, I've always been a goth kid, still am, always will be, I think. And I think that has paired very well with my love of horror. I think the two kind of come from the same place. I've always loved the macabre. I've always loved something kind of spooky. I remember when I was eight years old, I was writing short stories based on ghost sharks well before any other uh, company like Asylum or anybody was doing that stuff. I'm very jealous that I never wrote a screenplay for that. 
But uh, yeah, I just always did something horror related. If we did an art project, it was usually blood trails and bodies and lightning and all kinds of stuff. And I've, I've gotten in trouble many a time doing horror related projects when I wasn't supposed to. The reason it's a safe space for me though is various things. Um, coming to terms with various aspects of my identity. Uh, I've had ADHD, well my whole life like anybody, but I've had a diagnosis since I was five and I've been re-diagnosed as an adult. It still seems to be the case. And I think that that was why I gravitated towards it then is this coming to terms with the way my brain was working. Horror allowed me to be as creative as possible but it also was a place where the bad things were and the bad things could be controlled. I've always had a love for folklore. I've always had a love for those campfire stories. You know, I never really liked going to camp, but I did enjoy getting spooked out by some of the creepy campfire stories that were told. I really loved Beetlejuice since I was a kid. I was either watching the cartoon or I was watching the movie. Uh, every cartoon that I've ever watched really had something spooky in it. You know, if we were watching Batman the Animated Series, I was a fan of Scarecrow. Of course I was. Uh, any kid, I think, who was into horror loved Scarecrow. Jonathan Crane was a guy that we could understand. Somebody who was so put out by society that he wanted to make others scared. And I think that's where a lot of this industry comes from. We love fear, and that's because we have a very strange relationship with fear. We are afraid. But we are afraid of things that are not necessarily the things that go bump in the night. Or we are. You know, I know people who are afraid of vampires up until they were adults. I know people who are still afraid of vampires or ghosts or anything. I'm afraid of a lot of those sorts of things as well. Um, whether I believe in them or not, uh, here in the imagination, they can live quite well. But for me, the idea of them is comforting. The image of them is comforting. It's a type of reality that, in its darkness, is still imaginative. And I think the reason that it's such a safe space and the reason that we flock to it is because it reminds us that the world is magical. That there is more to this than just our physicality and to the emotions that we feel. Again, you can be an atheist, though and still feel this, you know, that is the magic. The creativity is the magic. The storytelling is the magic. You don't have to believe in vampires to really believe in what vampires can do when you have a good vampire story. And I just wanted to bring that about. I think horror is a safe space, but not in the way that we had thought. Because a safe space, it implies that it's safe for everyone. But let's face it, there are no safe spaces like that because not everyone is going to feel safe in the same spaces. For those of us who have an ideal that is more liberal, where we are more open and understanding of others, and we want to just share with others and try to not look at the things that we dislike. Fortunately, there are just enough people who are also conservative, who like the same things that we like, and we can get along on that scale, but for them, what we see as a safe space isn't a very safe space. They can't say the things that they would want to say and feel the way they want to feel without being judged by us. And that's not to say that we should feel necessarily worse or better for people who are good, people who are bad, whatever. I'm talking just on a more objective scale of what a safe space is. So for you, a safe space where you can speak in a way that is more comfortable isn't necessarily a safe space for somebody who wants to speak more freely really speak their mind. Then of course we get into the things that I've already mentioned where a safe space could just be broken by the fact that it was never properly safe, that it's been predatorial. And that is the difference. I think that um, despite the predatorial activities that have been going on in the horror community or industry, however you want to see it, those things can be changed and they can be stopped and they need to stop and I think it's time that we create the safety in horror that it needs. So not necessarily on the scale of the topics, I still say free reign on what we discuss and how we do it, and whether you like monsters or slashers, or if you want it more violent or if you want it less violent, if you want to have something a bit more subtle, there's something for everyone. And let's look at it as a whole, and let's make sure that everybody from every background has a place to go to within horror. 
that it is made for everyone. So let's continue to grow and continue to make sure that we have a broad perspective because horror is a great narrative tool to talk about the problems that we have in the world. For that, it's always going to be my sense. But... So, time to cap this off. That, ladies and gentlemen, was my shot of horror. <laughs> wow. Uh, I should also say, <coughs> I don't really drink much anymore. So, this is going to be an interesting and <laughs> fun segment. Woo! Okay. So thank you so much for watching this. I do hope that you got some enjoyment out of it. I do hope to make this a fairly educational sort of segment, just like any other segment that I have here, to make sure that everybody has something to talk about. And so these are just my opinions and thoughts, of course, keep that in mind. Uh, nothing I say here is necessarily from heavy research, it's just something that I feel. Um, but yeah, thank you. If you liked this, please, you know what to do, give it a like, subscribe. I would really appreciate it if you did that so we can always keep in touch. And if you want to talk about any of this, uh, there's comments down below, and of course, there is Twitter. Uh, my handle is at ShockaholicYT. Find me. Let's talk. Let's chill out. I love to do that on Twitter. Um, I have a growing little network, and I'd love to add you to it. So come on over. Let's discuss some horror and make it a safe space, as I already talked about. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And keep shocking. Stay safe.